pick up on the momentum from Boston, when I got some clarity as to following the trajectory and the momentum uh, that I have going on with... Um, By staying focused on that thread, so to speak? Yes, yes. And picking up on the marbles, and you, in Boston you're talking about you pull out a marble you don't want and put it back in a bag, and you put out a marble that you do want, and you go play with it. And in a sense, what had happened is the other day, I was kind of like shooting marbles with my mates, and I took out my bag, and I pulled out only the good ones, and I tossed the marbles off to the side, and the bag was kind of open, and we're at this the This analogy's top. getting out of hand. We're yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, at the top, and I landed on the apex of a hill in San Francisco, <laughs> and I went to pick up my bag of marbles, and I noticed that there was only six, but there used to be eight. And I looked at Well, those were the ones I didn't want anyway. So they rolled down a the hill. There's someone else's problem. I want to play with the good ones. Let's talk in real terms. Okay. <laughs> Tell us what you're talking about. Tell us what you're talking about. That marble analogy only takes gotcha. us so far. Sorry, gotcha. gotcha. Now it's in the bay. Some of them are lost. We don't know why you let them go. Did you want them to be gone? Did you want them to stay? Did the bad ones stay? They go? weren't the Did fun they ones. With... They weren't the fun ones. So they, they left. But um, the trajectory of what I'm really talking about specifically is in Philadelphia, I wanted to know about what, um, how, to, how to pure positive love. And well, your inner being has it, and it's yes. clarifying it with you all day, every day. Yes, exactly. Since, since Philadelphia, when I said that you, you, know, um, you were arguing for our limitations, why you teach meditations, because it's easier than teaching pure positive The thought. other day, when Esther and family and friends were making their way back from Barcelona, their flight left late, and so they missed their connection. They knew they were going to, so they'd made a reservation at the hotel. And then they'd booked a flight for the next morning back to San Antonio. So everything was fine. Better than fine. It was fun. And so when they got early, 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 early to their early morning San Antonio flight, there were lots of people at the gate and they saw the crew get on the plane, but then they didn't start boarding on time. And eventually they said, there was a missing flight attendant and they had to have four flight attendants or they couldn't go. And Esther said, I know what to do. <laughs> she didn't really say it out loud, but yeah, she knows the drill. And she's really good with a snack basket. So <laughs> then they were still waiting and another hour passed and they were still waiting another hour passed. And then she heard down the way, the Memphis flight was waiting for one flight attendant and so was the Sacramento flight waiting for a flight attendant. And Esther thought, there must be a little pile of flight attendants lost somewhere <laughs> around here because all the airplanes are missing one flight attendant. And then she sort of got her head in the game a little bit. And you know how when you're in something all together, people sort of start bonding together. And Esther thought, this is just really a lovely group of people because they were all sort of taking care of themselves and no one seemed upset and there was one particular woman that really caught Esther's eye because she was beautifully dressed and she seemed really at ease and she had two little girls one not even four and the other barely two and she was having fun with them they were playing games and they were eating snacks and they were running around and mom seemed to be enjoying them and each hour that passed she didn't seem to get more stressed and Esther herself was feeling more stressed with each hour that passed because she has history with airlines that another hour another hour another hour another hour and then it happened the flight crew the pilot timed out couldn't fly been there too long and Esther thought I'll do it <laughs> but they still held the flight and there were no other flights to book in other words there was enough going on with United Airlines that there was nowhere to go and then six hours later they boarded the flight and when Esther got on she realized that this woman and one of her children was going to sit across the aisle and Esther was against the window and the other little girl was going to sit next to Esther 
Esther just couldn't have been more excited because she'd been watching how wonderful they were and then the mother said calmly I think you should know that when this flight starts to taxi she's going to freak out and so if you could just lay on her so that she doesn't get out of her seatbelt that would be helpful and Esther said I have a broken rib but I think I can do that and so sure enough as soon as the plane began to move this little girl for whatever reason was different than she had ever been in all the hours that Esther had observed her Esther wanted her money back <laughs> it's like talk about bait and switch this had been a very wonderful little girl and now she was a maniac have you ever tried to hold a cat when it doesn't want to be held it was like that and so Esther said to her mother let's change places now the plane is moving and you're not supposed to get up but they did they switched places the flight attendant said good and mother laid on and it only lasted about how long do little things like that last usually two or three minutes at the most then here's this other little girl who is so little she can barely see out the window but she wants to so she's stretching as far as she can see she sees out the window and then she's trying to explain to Esther in a language that Esther doesn't understand <laughs> what she's seeing and Esther's agreeing with everything that she's saying and Esther thought I would like this moment in time to never pass how does one get so lucky that they get to taste the pure essence of pure positive energy well the way you do it you just put some marbles in your bag you put some marbles in your bag and then the universe reaches out and orchestrates an experience that leaves you in a place different than you would have been if that had not happened Esther thought for the rest of my life I'm gonna search the globe everywhere I go I'm gonna look for that little family I'm gonna look for them because I want to know her when she's three and when she's four and when she's five and when she's six she was pure positive energy and so Esther sat there she was holding her the little girl's tablet so that it wouldn't move during the takeoff and then Esther and this little girl conversed in some unknown language to Esther <laughs> for about 30 minutes and her mother said I've never seen her sit like that before and Esther thought I've never seen her do anything other than that <laughs> it's complicated isn't it it's complicated the way people believe it's complicated the way they behave it's complicated the way you mix with them it's complicated about what they want and what something causes them to react to in a moment in time and all you can do is be there and be as best as you can be in that moment in time you can't snap your fingers and be somewhere else and you can't demand that they be something different this mother knew that she couldn't scold that little girl into not being afraid that little girl was terrified for whatever reason and her mother just let her be terrified and just did her best to soothe we know that's a long way around a story to get to this place that we want you all to but if you could just lay on them when they're throwing a fit so that they don't hurt themselves and love them so much anyway and don't show any any disapproval of how they're being because they're not being that way because they want to be that way they're being that way because something caused them to feel that way and they'll get over it or they won't but the important thing is what you're doing in it so many of you this is a room full of teachers and healers and channelers and uplifters that's who you are but you didn't come to save this world it doesn't need to be saved you came to observe it you came to come to new desires for yourself but you didn't come to fix broken things or to focus on broken things you came to align with the fullness of who you are and live in the moments the best you can and uplift everywhere you can the best you can and that's got to be good enough because that's all there is and somehow you have this sense of urgency that you're responsible for everything your children say or you're responsible for that or for this you're not you are the keeper of your own point of attraction period and that's the stuff that happily ever after is made out of you see and when you take everybody else out of the equation in terms of you feeling like 
you owe them something or they owe you something and instead you remember we are all extensions of source energy and we all chose to be in this environment for very good reasons and we've all explored and we've all put into our vortices things that we want and we are all having variable relationships with that and the best I can do for myself or for any of them is to demonstrate my alignment with my inner being as best I can every time I can and we promise you everything else will take care of itself everything else will take care of itself if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next